today I'd like to show you an absolutely fabulous fiddle yard design and also bring you up to date with the progress of the Helix. Hi, welcome to Chadwick Model Railway. I'm Charlie. There's been some big changes here at Chadwick since the last video. If you recall, this is how it was when I showed you around and also the space that I had available. And that bookcase you see there has now gone to the tip and I've cleared away some of this, um, not quite junk, but more useful stuff. And you can see the space that's available up towards the sink where I told you that I <laughs> wash my track. And if you see that YouTube board on its side there, just to the left of it, um, is, a, the, uh, is a board that I wish to take out. And that would be the access through to allow me to walk into the layout. So the first thing I had to do was obviously remove the hillside that I spent so many hours constructing. Now, never being one for the right tool for the right job, I started with a carving knife um, to remove the glue that was holding the Celotex to that piece of chipboard. Clearly not without risk. The rock face itself, I realised I'd held down with uh, glue from the Bosch glue gun, which I can't deny it, it's simply very, effect, very effective. And then reverting to a trowel with a hammer just to show my skills as a tradesman. The track, of course, needs to be looked after. And I always glue my track down using copy decks, which is a rubber based glue. And so if I change my mind, I can always whip it off. And it comes up quite, uh, quite easily once you've uh, obviously removed the dropper wires and you can reuse it without any real problems. That also goes for the, the underlay, but it's nothing like the right tool for the right job. So I need to keep the hillside that's the other side of the saw. Um, and there's no way in the world I would have got that carving knife through this hillside. So that was the best way of approaching it. And like a hot knife through butter, that saw went straight through without any problems whatsoever. To remove the board, it was a little bit reluctant, but with a bit of brute force and ignorance, um, that piece of chipboard came up and is now down the local tip. I did remove the hillside um, for future use, but you know, we can't just throw these things away. Next thing is the track on the boards that were the old Chadwick. And these are two six foot by three foot boards but again, because it was basically um, copy decks, all of it just peeled off relatively easily. And the Woodland Scenics foam track bed came up without any real damage. So that can all be reused as the new layout progresses. So that leaves the bare boards, but I wanted to keep the board surface just in case I needed to use those boards in the fiddle yard because um, they're not ideal. They're six mil ply rather than 12. Um, but the supporting timbers are something called CLS, which I think is Canadian lumber supplies or something. But anyway, I had to get the boards on their size and then uh, strip out all the timber. And um, I can always reuse the timber for battening along the back wall with a fiddle yard. Now with the bookcase, and the junk cleared away, I'm able to utilise the space above it where I need to put another shelf, um, which is another piece of 2.5 metre chipboard from my old friends at B&Q. And with a few brackets and the, my faithful old Makita drill and uh, my laser leveller, uh, that shot up in sort of next to no time once I'd uh, decided where I'd hidden my 6mm masonry drill. The truth is I never did find the six mil masonry drill. I just used a steel bit instead. But then again, it's only made out of thermalite block. I did fill the crack in that needs to be repainted. And I've got an issue now with a radiator and I'm in a bit of a dilemma exactly what to do with it. But the shelf is up and we are good to go. Now, before we go any further, I need to show you exactly how the track plan works because I've revised it a little bit once more. Well, here we are back in any rail and I must mention that I am absolutely astounded by the generosity of the people who follow this channel and the time they are prepared to give to me um, designing um, layouts. 
and in particular I want to mention Lee Stoddart, Mick Yates and Paul Bird and I'm extremely embarrassed to say so because I can't find his name but it's the gentleman that designed this one here. Um, it's called Chadwick Storage Colour JPEG but I really can't find the original email to thank him. So this is something that Lee had put together and as you can see down here this is where we're concentrating on this is the sink area here and I put a 16 inch gap between the edge of the helix and the sink to allow me to walk in here to um, maintain this area and also to get to the scenics that are on top of the helix. The helix I'd like to have it, it curved whoops I'd like to have the helix curved around here to allow better access for me to, to walk in and I'm also going to change this um, track plan just slightly more so that these tracks will actually come off here and then go up there so this area is more of a walkthrough. The second helix in this area these will also be curved to allow a much more easy access through here. If you remember the reason the re whole reason for doing away with the tail chaser in this area was a knee problem because this used to be a duck under and it was absolutely dreadful and I must confess since um, since I have stopped crawling underneath my layout um, my layout my knee is giving me far less problems. So this is the the guts of the the upper deck this line here will go above this one along here hopefully and then join back up with this line here before it goes down. I don't know if you know much about um, helix but um, the way these have been done is you should also always climb the helix on the outside track and that way the gradient is less. If we take a look at the, the lower level now so if I go down to storage level and turn off the scenic level and this is the the one that I've adapted from this gentleman who sent me this one here I am so sorry I don't remember your name um, and as, as you can see here I have uh, altered the way the the direction of these helix so looking at it here now um, there is an enormous amount of track and but there is much greater storage and a good friend of mine Ed mentioned a few days ago you can't have enough storage and it's a fair point so now we are looking at many meters of storage um, so this is all in one direction and this is all in the other and as you come out of the lower level you then climb the helix on the outside track and it's the same with the other one all makes perfect sense hopefully um, the only other thing to consider is obviously the um, board brakes because if you ever move house you you know you're going to take your layout with you you really don't want to have the board brakes in the middle of your point assemblies so if I were to make a board here a, a cut here and here and try to keep all these points on one board it would make it much easier in the future and also this area here is under the viaduct and the last thing I need under, under there is point motors and it will need servicing. Again as you come around the corner here there are no points and then there is this large area here which won't go onto one board I imagine there will have to be a cut through and then back out here. So that's the guts of um, the layout and um, as I said previously I cannot express how grateful I am to the subscribers to this channel who are prepared to sit down for a good few hours and um, help me design a more productive layout. I am so, so grateful. Um, to show you the 3D view, <laughs> it's, it's been an absolute disaster because I really didn't know what I was doing and the 3D view is all over the place because I've got my levels wrong. Rest assured, um, you know, this area here um, is all on the upper level it's just I've just made a complete hash of it and I, do, I really don't know how to fix it and I'll gladly email this uh, track plan to anybody who thinks they can correct that 3D view um, but wow well, it is what it is isn't it um, but uh, but there we go anyway there's the track plan I do hope you like it um, and hopefully um, I won't have to modify it much I, you know these are quite tight curves but we'll see how it progresses. I mean, if I have to lose, you know, the odd siding that go around here, that's not the end of the world. And I did mention about an automatic wheel cleaner that would run for both directions. Well, that's what this track here does. So 
every train from every every siding as it were can come into here so uh, it would just do a return loop and then come back this way and through that siding before it goes out again so all all trains can be cleaned this is where one of the two helixes will go or is it helices here's the radiator issue it stands out about five inches um, and what I intend to do, what, what I've done is I've turned this radiator off to see if the other radiators in this room um, can, can support it. Otherwise, clearly the radiator will have to stay if the room becomes too cold. But what I intend to do is just remove this radiator and put the helix up against the wall to give me more room uh, coming into um, this sort of thoroughfare here, which comes around by the sink. So the first helix will come out here and it comes out, I think it's 51 inches. So it's a fair old hunk. Um, though that's the plan, so that the upper track will come in, it will then go uh, down in an anti-clockwise fashion and then come out um, with a fiddle yard 18 inches above the, above the floor, which is actually 18 inches um, below the upper deck. Now, if you're a regular to this channel, you'll understand when I say that my carpentry skills are not good which is why I really can't use these weapons of war to construct the helix myself. And to that end, I've actually farmed the jobs out to a very good friend of mine, James Hudson. Let's go and load the car up and get over there and see him. down to James's at DCC Train Automation and it's in a small village or hamlet called uh, Hambridge which is about two miles south of Curry Rival in deepest darkest Somerset. Anyway the sun's shining so let's see how we get on. That's not how I get on with James, let's see how we get on today I think. Mean. On entering the shop, you realise that it's quite a specialist facility. There's an extensive range of the Knock Scenic side, but there isn't a tremendous amount of rolling stock, though there is some held here. But what this shop really specialises in is obviously the automation and the supply of DCC components. And on hand, there's already a Helix. Stocking DigiKeys, DCC concepts and DigiTrax equipment besides the normal accessories and the wire, there's a great deal here for the DCC enthusiast. Hello, welcome to DCC Train Automation. I'm James. We're here putting together the first of Charlie Bishop's Helix for his railway. This is the baseboard we're putting together at the moment. It's made of 12 mil laser cut poplar ply. It's a bespoke built board for Charlie. He wanted a nice smooth edge so when he's filming he doesn't catch his legs and things on it as he's walking around the layout. This has been bespokely designed. Every part has been laser cut with our new machine.
We're doing all range of baseboards now, so if anybody wants something bespoke or from our range of baseboards, you can get this now. Let's turn it over and get it ready to put the top on. Here we go, all nicely in place, ready for us to build the helix off. We have given this helix baseboard 18 inch long legs, so that will be the height off the floor for Charlie's fiddle yard. We'll start building the helix up here like this and go round clockwise to create the entry and exit of the helix to suit Charlie's layout. Now you can see it in place and the smoothness of the front because Charlie wanted it like that and uh, hope you like them. Now in case you were wondering what these curved segments were during that uh, piece of film, these make up the bed of the helix and there are eight per circle and so you end up doing a bit of maths with over 80 of these and here are, um, this is the foam track bed to be glued on top uh, and as a matter of interest this is floor underlay that I bought um, from Wix. It was uh, 26 pounds for a large pack of, of uh, large rectangular pieces, again laser cut by James. And if you think this is a lot of work to glue that onto there, well this is just the first helix because there are well over 80 of these to be done. So I've brought them home to glue them up to return next week when we build it. Well, I do hope you found this video interesting. It was a little bit more unusual, a little bit of drone footage thrown in just for good fun. Um, as usual, I'd like to thank my patrons. You are the guys that make it all possible, along with the people who donate to the channel. And if you'd like to do that, then there is the link for the patrons. And there's the button to subscribe if you haven't. In the meantime, there's a video here and here. And I'll see you next week when we put all this lot together. Take care. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.